live from Las Vegas, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering IBM Insight 2015, brought to you by IBM. Now your host, Dave Vellante and Paul Gillen. Welcome back. This is Dave Vellante, Paul Gillen, rap, call Paul Gillen wrapping up two days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. IBM Insight, Paul. Some of the things that we take away from this conference is, I go back to some of the things I said a couple years ago, IBM has taken this analytics portfolio and has just driven a truck through the big data business, they don't use that term, we do, uh, and has emerged, number one, $17 billion business, I'm saying it's well over 20 by the end of this year. Um, it's still a collection of myriad products and services and consulting you know, parts of the organization, but it is a massive portfolio uh, and pretty much any problem that you know, somebody has, IBM's got an answer. Um, and it's very impressive. Uh, I think the other thing is, we heard a lot about Watson. Watson is really hitting its stride. Uh, we've, Watson has gone from sort of interesting, I don't want to say gimmick, it's more than a, it was always more than a gimmick, but interesting experiment to something that's really impacting all facets of IBM's business and directly into customers' businesses. Demand seems very, very high. Um, Big emphasis on open source and technologies like, like Spark. Obviously, IBM always talking about business outcomes. That's their wheelhouse. This was a good conference in the standpoint of you walk around the hallways here, you see business getting done. Um, sales guys are here, they're on their game. A um, lot of suits, a lot of big companies. Uh, we also heard, you know, which is unique for IBM, some startup action going on. Some folks from the cloud community coming in. Radpad, as an example. Uh, and a couple of others. So, you know, pretty impressive. You know, 15, 20,000 people, one of the biggest big data shows on the planet. What are your closing thoughts? Uh, you know, I've been following this company for 30 years, more than 30 years, and the thing that's always impressed me about IBM is, is its capacity for reinvention. Uh, the the uh, pundits have said last rights over this company uh, several times the time I've been watching them, and IBM always seems to find a way to, uh, uh, to, to, to duck the, uh, uh, the Grim Reaper, if you will. <laughs> and uh, you know, I, there was a, uh, I got a, an email this morning from a colleague of mine who's a great, um, uh, who's been in the technology uh, media t for a long time, followed IBM for about as long as I have, and he said, when are they going to boot Rometty? Uh, what's this, this, company is, this company is screwed, you know, 14 straight quarters of declining uh, uh, earnings, and my response was, I think they're doing all the right things. You know, you got to give, the, Wall Street is, is brutal. You can't look at stock price and make decisions about things like, like a massive turnaround like this. As you said, as we've been saying throughout this event, this company is executing very well on some strategic initiatives that are differentiated. They have a, they have a direction, they have a purpose. Unlike some companies uh, out there in their space, I think they have the ability to execute, they have the portfolio in place. And I was actually impressed with our last uh, guest here, uh, Andrew Juarez from Coca-Cola, who talked about IBM as a strategic partner. A partner, IBM is a partner, he said. Well, when you have companies like Coca-Cola who call you a partner, you're doing something right. And that, that is an asset that, you know, no, no cloud startup has that. Um, so I think that this, this company is, is uh, uh, they're just methodically executing on a strategy that I think is, uh, is going to bear fruit for them. And we are seeing them, seeing the analytics business, $20 billion business this year, becoming really a, a really strategic uh, differentiator for them. Yeah, I mean, you're right. IBM's not fumbling. Um, they're not head faking, they're not announcing things and then, you know, it's a big, huge strategic initiative and, and pulling them back. I mean, I, I hate to say it, my friends at HP, it's, they, they, they do that. They announce the public cloud and they pull it back, you know, you, and you're really not sure what direction What is going. HP all about these um, days? I, I'm well, really I, think, clear. I think the split of HP is a big move. I think it was inevitable and it had to happen, so that gives focus. And I think, you know, I'm more familiar with HP Enterprise, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, and I think that you know, we'll see, but I do think that gives the company more focus and it allows them to actually develop a business model that doesn't have the distraction of trying to market end to end because that really was not their strength. And let, you know, HP Inc. go knock heads with, with Dell. I think it's going to be interesting. HP, you know, still has a big supply chain. We'll see if they can get costs down. They still have a great channel and, and people want them to, to win. But from a strategy and product standpoint, it's not nearly, I mean, you compare HP to IBM, and IBM's got 
really crisp, clear strategy. It comes across you know, very, very strong. I would say the same is true for Oracle. You know, you listen to Larry Ellison's keynotes and it's... Very impressive what Oracle's really doing. Really crisp, right? Yeah. It's not ambiguous what they're doing. You don't walk away saying, oh, what is their cloud all about? Um, and there's still parts of that, by the way, inside of IBM, but they're, particularly in cloud, but they're really getting their cloud act together. They were behind in cloud, they had to make the software layer app acquisition, and they're, catching, they're playing catch up. And it's hard to catch up with Amazon because Amazon's running out faster than everybody else. So the key to competing with Amazon is you've got to have differentiation. Oracle, we've talked about this a number of times, has differentiation. IBM, let's bring it back to IBM. IBM clearly has differentiation. Analytics is a big differentiation play there. Applications, up the stack, Watson is the secret weapon. So all those things I think bode well over time for IBM. I really agree with you. It's going to happen for IBM. The, the managed decline businesses are going to hit, hit bottom and, and stabilize, and the new growth businesses, which are growing at 20, 25, 30% a year, are going to overtake those. And so IBM, classic fashion, turning the, the, the cruise ship, and then, but focused, and making big bets in areas that are not only high growth, but transformative. You know, anybody can make bets. I mean, EMC made a lot of bets in high growth areas, you know, cloud, big data, software defined. Okay, well, turns out those bets didn't pay off in time. It still remains to be seen whether they will for IBM, but IBM you know, is, is not following the pack. You know, they're leading into these new transformative areas. And, and they've, they've taken their medicine. I mean, getting rid of Lenovo, get, getting rid of the, uh, of the uh, x86 business was not easy. Having to pay uh, to get rid of the semiconductor business was not easy, but that was a matter of taking their medicine and seeing that the short-term pain was worth the, the long-term gain. Yeah, and, and I think that, um, I, you do hear that a lot about, oh, you know, Ginny's got to go, and I don't think Ginny has to go. I think Ginny is representative of the diversity at IBM. They you know, promote women in tech, um, and, and she came out of the strategy role. She owns this strategy, and I think you know, I think IBM board wants to see this through. And so, you know, 14 quarters sounds like a long time. You know, it kind of feels like a long time, but look at HP. H Meg Whitman, when she took that job over, said, it's going to be a five-year turnaround. Yeah. And now, what is it? 20 that? quarters. Three years into that five-year turnaround, the split is happening. You would have thought that would have happened in year one or two. Now we're into year three, it's going to be another, you know, I don't know, 12, 18 months before you see, see that take shape. Whereas IBM, we're well into the, to the turnaround, but you just get a feeling that they've, like you said, jettisoned some of those businesses that were, you know, albatrosses. The microelectronics business was another one. You know, their storage business was one that I'm quite familiar with, which struggled for a number of years, but they're even streamlining that, moving toward a software-defined place, making the hard decisions. So, of course, what, um, what we don't see at these conferences is what's happening at the street level. So, what are the, 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 uh, uh, the, the global services, the sales force, uh, the people uh, who deal with the business partners, uh, the people who really are responsible for selling the products, is the message trickling down to them? And that's something that you can't, come out of a conference like this with answers, but I think it is, it was impressive for me to, to walk in the first day and see that they needed a basketball arena to, <laughs> to hold the crowd. <laughs> right, here. you felt like you were in you the know, Boston Garden. A right? lot of people were here, and they were, they were cheering and, and, uh, and clapping, and, and they were excited. Yeah, so, okay, um, let's wrap here, Paul. I think that, uh, so, it's been a big week, big month for theCUBE. Um, obviously, we're here at IBM Insight. We've, got, we've had four days of coverage at uh, Oracle Open World. I'm heading out there uh, tomorrow. We're at the main stage, the official sort of Oracle uh, Open World broadcast on Howard Street. We're also on the ground inside the show floor at the Cisco booth, you know, talking to one of Oracle's partners. Um, so, a lot of action going on in, uh, in, at Moscone that we're going to go check out. All right, so ch uh, check out ibmgo.com. Uh, you can go there for all the, all the on-demand videos. Uh, a, a ton of research on there, a lot of social action, social engagement. You'll see the keynotes, you'll see all the CUBE videos. Check out wikibon.com for all the research. SiliconAngle.com uh, has all the videos of this show and other shows that we do. Uh, check out crowdchat.net slash IBM Insight. That's also part of the IBM Go experience. A lot of content out there. Uh, thanks to everybody, Andrew, great job today. Alex, Sam, and all the team. Bert, really appreciate all your efforts on, uh, on CrowdChat, helping us to, to, to document uh, these events. It's really, really helpful to 
so that we could fossilize Google's crawlers and see it, you know, back when we back back in the office and write our uh, write our analysis. So thanks for watching, everybody. This is the Cube. We're out from IBM Insight. See you next time. <laughs>